You have most likely heard by now about ChatGPT, the new artificial intelligence chatbot tool from OpenAI. ChatGPT, which was released at the end of last year, is trained on OpenAI's family of large language models and creates surprisingly intelligent sounding text in response to user prompts. More than 1 million people tried it out within the first week, including me, and me being the normal person that I am, took full advantage of it. Now, besides entertaining myself while procrastinating my thesis writing, or for doing basic information searches, or writing science essays, I was keen to know, as you may be too, will ChatGPT actually help us make science discoveries faster, in particular in biological research, such as coming up with drug solutions to cancer, ageing or Alzheimer's disease? Well, to see how ChatGPT will change science, we first need to understand what science is, and what scientists are up to and what problems need addressing. Now, the traditional scientific methods is you make an observation, you ask questions about it, and see what is already known. You then refine these questions into a testable hypothesis. You can then design experiments to test the hypothesis, analyse the data, and determine to what degree the results support the hypothesis. If they don't support it, you may need to rethink your questions, or experimental design. If the results do support, then we have new scientific insights, which likely leads to more questions being raised. Actually, that isn't how science is always done. One can now take a more exploratory approach, but nonetheless, the foundation is essentially that all good scientists have a hypothesis that they want to test, and good experimental design to test it. Hey, Lise, check out my science project. How? What's that supposed to prove? That nerds conduct electricity. Ow! (laughs) So can ChatGPT be used to enhance this process, foster more creativity, and help us analyse our data? Well, my answer is to some extent, and here are three points I want to elaborate on. Point number one, you need to know how to communicate with it, be specific. So let's use an example. My observation is that humans age and have increased risk of different diseases. So one question is, well, why do we age? Is ageing the same in all organisms? Or you can go straight in with the big questions, how would you find a cure? What experiments could be done to find a cure? And well, I did input this into ChatGPT and the information output was all very generic. And indeed, ChatGPT warned me that finding a cure for ageing is a complex and challenging task. Now, part of this is likely my fault because I'm not asking the right questions. So I asked it to generate some hypothesis that I could test. In many ways, I needed to be more specific, to break it down and to get more specific feedback. And so ultimately, I feel the benefits you can get from ChatGPT very much depend on how you communicate with it. It needs the imagination of the human to ask the right prompts to have a good conversation in the first place. ChatGPT is essentially a tool, like many other tools that us researchers use. But like tools, you have to know how to use them. Like knowing how to drive a car and knowing that it's much easier to butter a piece of bread using a butter knife when you're not wearing gloves, or tying shoelaces while not wearing gloves. You have to find a way to take off the gloves, metaphorically speaking, and find the right way to ask the right question. Now point number two, there are some cool things that ChatGPT can do. Besides simple question and answer, ChatGPT can do many other things, in particular there's been a lot of cool applications of how it can write code. And this extends from Python, R, and even recently I was using it to get some code to help me analyse some fluorescent images using Fiji. Fiji is just image J. It's also very useful when it comes to experimental design. In some cases, it was good at identifying what controls I should be using. But again, it sort of comes back to my point number one, that you have to be very specific with your initial input if you really want to get the most out of the tool. And at least on to point number three, that you also should be aware of its limits. OpenAI states in the website of ChatGPT that sometimes it writes plausible sounding but incorrect or nonsensical answers. Case in point, I had a play about further with experimental design. I wanted to see if it could give me the information of a gene sequence, so-called cDNA. So this is the coding sequence of a gene. And this is useful for cloning methods that we use in molecular biology and also for designing primers. And so if ChatGPT could easily give me this information, that would save me some time. Now, I asked it for some cDNA sequences, and it started well, and then it just got sort of ridiculous. So much so that while not giving me the correct sequence, it did give me a good laugh. But I would rather ChatGPT be honest up front and tell me it didn't know the answer than to give me a response that I know to be wrong. But the concern is when you don't know if it's wrong 
or write. And it would be nice to see references to see where I got the information from. Then at least I could fact check it. But at the moment, giving references or scientific papers is not something that it can do. Moreover, the current model isn't actually up to date and it's trained on information up to 2021. So for learning about the later scientific research for now, especially in the aging neuroscience, CRISPR, gene editing, biotech fields, this YouTube channel will have to be your go-to. And if you want to catch up on the latest breakthroughs and longevity research from last year, then you want to check out this video here. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this more brief video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.